Approximately two decades, I represented and recruited athletes. Um, the first ten years of my career, there would be many people who would point to me and say that I was like the poster boy for everything that's wrong with amateur athletics and the agent business. I had absolute disregard. I had no concern for the NC2A regulations and, um, quite frankly, uh, had little concern for the eligibility of any of the players that I came in contact with. How is this story received? How is this story taken from uh, the general public as well as the agent community? Well, first let me tell you about the agent community. I really didn't give a crap about the agent community. What they think about what I did, I could care less. These guys weren't inviting me to dinner before the article, and they sure as hell have me off their holiday card list now. So, not my biggest concern. As far as the September, October, November, we're buying them lunch. Sorry. It's happening. It's not just me. It's all over the country. They're not signing with us because we're buying them a hamburger that's pretty decent. Hopefully there's something more than that, but any agent who says he doesn't do it uh, is just paying cash. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny. I told these guys. I had sat on a panel in Oregon um, last month, and I was sandwiched between two compliance guys. And quite frankly, those were the only two compliance people I had ever seen in my life at the time. <laughs> Sorry, you know, what's the issue of going? Oh, is the issue of going? When I, when, I was, uh, when I first got contacted by the school, um, it, uh, it was something that I knew immediately I had to do. I had to make certain that no matter what else I had on the schedule, I made my way here to come and speak to all of you. Um, it, it, it means a lot to me um, and, uh, and, and members of my family. Thank you so much for having me here, welcoming me here. He's hiding this. This is how we're busting you. They're telling you, don't let us bust you. Yeah, guys are just okay. It was like dealing with Maurice Claret. My partner and I used to joke, we could put a pile of shit here and put a stack of money here and say, Maurice, this is shit. <laughs> And this is money. <laughs> Which one do you want? An idea of how to control the agent problem and still get the players uh, their money. Don't make agents sneak around and pay guys under the table. You know, for the uneducated minority. <laughs> uh, I, I take a little exception, uh, respectfully, uh, to what Gene said. Um, obviously, going through law school uh, is tedious. It's, it's brutal from what I'm told, uh, but can be. Um, but, but I assure you that when you lose your livelihood, whether it's a degree in law and losing your ability to practice as an attorney, or whether it's having your ticket pulled by the Players Association like I did, it's equally devastating. Boy, I had about 20 years representing athletes, and when you have a mortgage, you have mouths to be, and you have responsibilities, and you have your ticket pulled, boy, it, it sucks. Uh, it, it sucks. Whether you're a lawyer or you're not a lawyer. Apparently, it would appear that it gives you an extra level of protection, um, knowing that you're dealing with somebody that's a lawyer. Um, I've dealt with enough lawyers to probably not popular with things in this room. Um, I don't know necessarily if I agree with the idea that just because somebody's an attorney, they're less likely to be wrong. I've met plenty of lawyers who were quite wrong. Study done uh, by FFL in 2009, and uh, I'm not sure the professor has seen this, uh, that showed that the average shortfall is under $3,000 a year. So uh, I think if we recognize that we should identify whether or not the cheating <coughs> from a player's perspective is it born of need or is it born of greed? Because you're not going to be able to stop the greed. Um, but if we can do something to address the need, then I think that a large percentage of these people will be less likely to uh, get themselves into these situations. I had taken on the philosophy that was instilled in me by one of my early mentors and partners, a guy who was the one of the first major black sports agents in the industry. His name was Harold, they called him Doc Daniels. They called him Doc because 
he had a PhD in mathematics. It wasn't from Pepperdine, it was from St. Stephen's Bible School or something like that. So I don't know if he did it online or mailed it in. But the fact is, they called him not. <laughs> and the man was about 6'8", and he was about close to 400. You know, maybe a double, double away from 400 if he wasn't. And, and he said to call him Doc. Brother, I'm calling him Doc. <laughs> but Doc had instilled this philosophy in me that we ain't members of the NC2A. These ain't our rules. We didn't agree to follow these rules. And that stayed with me, and I operated under that understanding. One of the things that I credit George Dorman with, who was the writer for this article, is he was very careful to craft this article to make certain that I told my story, shared my experiences, and I didn't try to make excuses or offer explanations for my behavior. I had spent about two years getting to know, recruiting, paying, entertaining a quarterback by the name of Ryan Leaf, who was projected to go first or second pick in the draft. Now I know there's little spears and everything. The guy was like one of the great draft busts of all time. But hey, <laughs> the fact is his deal would have paid over a million dollars worth of fee. So, you know, even though he doesn't have much money left, he married some cheerleader chargers and didn't have a prenup. You guys as lawyers hopefully really, you will instill that. <laughs> well, but I came to find out in my four and a half years working with Gary Richard is that there are a lot of ways you could go about breaking the rules aside from paying players if you're inclined to do so. You can be very creative in that if you want to be. And we were. We did a lot of stuff that technically was not paying players, but technically was very against the rules. We came out with it afterwards. So what I'm wondering is how are you dealing with the questions that are coming up of well, now you're only, it's kind of like, after you get caught with the crime, now we'll implement everybody. Okay, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, and having the courage to ask it, because, you know, heck, if you offend me, I might get up there and crack you upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I said this in the article, I have two young daughters, they're now seven and nine. And my oldest daughter, Sophie, she, she got on the computer and she starts Googling, and of course she's Googling her dad. And what does she see? She sees my suspension and what they alleged that I did. So I bartered, I traded, I leveraged the stories that I had and the experiences that I had had over my 20 years to get my paragraph to change the ending of my story. Legacy is very, very important. It goes far beyond just improper relationships with coaches, people on the inside. Um, you, you know, when guys say, well, I don't pay players, that's because a lot of these guys already have ins with the coaches or ins within the uh, athletic department, and they don't feel the need to do that stuff because they have somebody delivering them for them already. So, I mean, it, people can say they run it clean, but that's because they're waving the hand over here and you don't see what the one's doing underneath the table over here. We need more people like Josh or, or more content from Josh, and I know he's, he's got a book coming out later. <coughs> Thanks but, for the uh, plug. <laughs> <laughs> you can return it later. I have yeah, something to plug. Illegal procedure in 2012. Yeah. <laughs> what you run into, as Warren alluded to, is some players just don't want to comply with the process. And, and do you have any idea why? I don't know why. Because there are guys like me running around. Forget giving them money. But there are, for me, there's there's 50 of me. For every one of you. I mean, there's 100 of me. That's very true. Maybe not with as nice a tie. I got one compliment. <laughs> Whether I was an attorney or I wasn't an attorney, my livelihood got taken away. So I understand somebody goes to law school, you got a law degree, that's great, and it, it, it's hard to do it, and I, I applaud every single one of you guys for doing this thing. Although I've always felt that anybody who goes through the trouble of becoming an attorney and chooses to waste their time chasing these players around the country is a bigger moron than the guys that were pretty. <laughs> <laughs>